Hey everybody, it's Rogway here, and uh, today we are starting our new unit on uh, web design. And um, we're going to be using a new program called Dreamweaver for that. Um, in past videos, I've used several different softwares, but uh, we're going to stick with Dreamweaver. It's part of the Adobe family, and it does a decent job. Uh, there's a couple things that I do like about it, and we're going to start with that. Um, once you load up Dreamweaver, you'll have some options as to how you want to set it up with dark mode or light mode. Uh, there's a couple choices. You want to choose the standard workspace. Um, if you accidentally chose developer, that's okay. But as a beginner, you probably want the standard. You can easily switch that up in the top right corner here, go from standard to developer. Uh, you're going to have some sort of a window that looks like this. It might not look exactly like this, but regardless of where you end up, you're going to be able to go to File, New. And uh, you'll see in the list here that you have all sorts of different programming languages that can be used. We're going to stick to HTML. We're going to stick with the most basic one. And we're going to learn some simple HTML today just to get started. <coughs> Excuse me. We're going to give our website a title. And I'm going to call this... Uh, my first website okay and so that's gonna be over here uh, it's HTML5 that's good and we're gonna hit create and you're gonna see this uh, you're gonna have this code that uh, is the default code that you sort of see uh, when you start building a website this is called boilerplate code uh, we're gonna talk about what that means in a second and if your screen got split in half, that's a good thing. But if yours looks like mine, you're going to want to go up here and turn on split. And what that's going to do is it's going to split your screen into two. You're going to see your browser view above, and you're going to see your coding view below. And you can move this divider as much as you want, up and down, whatever, so that you can have more room for either or. And these little side windows, I'm just going to click the little arrow just so I have more room to see what's going on here. All right. So one of the reasons I really like Dreamweaver is it gives you the option of coding manually, uh, or it also gives you things like snippets and things that you can use insert, you can use to kind of build a site quicker. Um, but we're going to go through the real sort of, um, I guess, manual way of building a site. And uh, we'll get to those other features at a later date. Uh, so if we look at the boilerplate code that it creates, um, when you're working in HTML, everything works around tags. And you can see that a tag has a less than and it has a greater than. And anything that's in between the less than and greater than is what the tag is telling the browser to do. So in this case, this first tag says that this document type is an HTML document. That means that this code below is all HTML. The next tag is an HTML tag, which basically says that the HTML starts right here. Okay, so it's saying that this is where it's going to begin. And if I click on that, you'll see that every tag has an opening tag and a closing tag. You see the two that highlight? Uh, a closing tag is different from an opening tag because it has a forward slash. That means that anything between these two is going to be HTML in this case. It's telling, it's defining an area for the HTML code to sit. All right, and tags are really easy. Once you understand this simple idea of opening and closing, um, it, it's really easy to sort of follow what the tags are doing. Some tags do not close, and I'll get to those in a second. So the next tag we see is the header tag. It's short, uh, short term, it says head. And the way I like to describe this to people when they're starting web design is the header is kind of where the brains of the website are going to be. It's going to have links to external files. It's going to have the title. It's going to have all sorts of things that it needs in order to operate better, okay? Um, within that, you'll see this meta uh, tag, which we don't really have to pay much attention to. This is just telling it what character set to use. Um, you'll notice that this one doesn't close, and neither does this one. But this one, title, is where the text for what we wrote in the title description at the start when we made a new document. This is where it goes. And what this does is it kind of gives a little description at the top of your tab when you go to the website 
um, as to what the website is all about. So the title is sort of what the page that you're viewing or the, the website that you're building is all about. So that's a descriptive title that you put at the top of your site. Once we get out of the head, you can see that it closes here, we go into something called the body. And the body is where you will actually see what is going on in the site. So just like your own body, the head is where the brain sits, that's where you do all your thinking, but the body and is really what people see. So a way you can think of that is the head is the thinking part and the body is where the visual part comes in. And in HTML, you can add as many spaces as you want, okay? Um, the browser is not gonna see them anyways. So for your own organization, it's nice to space things out so that you can fit things within certain parts of the page or whatever so it looks a little bit better. Okay, so we are inside of the body tag and you can tell that we're inside because we have gone within the opening part and the closing part of the body. So we're gonna put our cursor in between the two. Anywhere, it could be here, it could be here, it could be here, anywhere between the two tags. And I'm gonna just put some text. I'm gonna say this is some text. And you notice that when I do that up here, um, it updates and it shows us what the browser actually sees. I'll just close that. But uh, this is the browser's view. Now it just slapped that text in there because it doesn't have any formatting on it right now. It just put it in as the default font, Times New Roman, and basically just put it in on a white background, sort of the most default font you could ever possibly use. Um, probably not much different than when browsers first came out. It would have been a lot of text-based sites, uh, very little images and stuff, because that would have slowed the internet down at that time. So we got some text in there. But let's say we want to make that text look a little bit more fancy. All right, we got lots of options for that. I'm going to show you a few real easy ones. So um, we're going to learn our first tag here. Um, we are going to surround this text with an H1 tag, and that is short for header one. So what you're gonna do with that is you're gonna do a less than H1 and then greater than. And what you'll notice Dreamweaver does is it automatically creates the closed tag for us. Now sometimes this is useful because if I wanted to just type now, that text would become header one. And as soon as it ends, this would go back to regular. But if I already have existing text, like the text that, oops, the text that I wrote earlier, this is some text, what I would want to do is actually take this chunk, the closing uh, part, and either go to edit cut, or right click and cut, or command X to cut, and then I would go to the end of the line and paste it in there. So command V, or edit paste, or right click and paste. Lots of options for pasting. And you'll notice that when we surround it, it becomes this bold, bigger text. And that's what heading one looks like. That is the, the sort of default um, look of header one. Um, we can change the one to different sizes. We could go two, and you'll see that's going to become smaller. Make sure to change both. You'll see that they become smaller. We can go three, uh, up to seven, I believe and it's just gonna keep getting smaller. H1 is a very important tag on a website because when a, a search engine like Google is looking for what a website is all about, it always looks for the H1. It always looks for the title. So if you make your titles descriptive, if it explains what the site is about, you're gonna rank much higher on the search engines because it'll know exactly what your site is about. So just keep that in mind if you're ever building a website, that H1 is very important. Okay, and like I said, we could change that to H2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, but for this case, we're just gonna leave it as H1. So that's our first sort of formatted text. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some text on the next line. So what I'm gonna do is after this tag, I'm gonna just hit the uh, enter return key, and I'm gonna just say, uh, let's make a longer line of text. This is an example of a longer line of text, okay? And you're gonna see, whoops, I'll put spell that correctly. You're gonna see that it puts it on the next line in the default font. 
Now, I want to show you guys something because uh, this is an interesting thing that uh, one of the sort of mistakes people make when they're when they're starting out. Um, if I wanted to keep adding text, let's say I want to go down to the next line and say, this is a new line of text. You will notice that it doesn't actually put it down to the next line. If you remember what I said before, browsers do not see the spaces that we add within our formatting. Uh, the only reason this one moved down to the next line is because the H1 ended, so it started a new line afterwards. So what we would need to do if we wanted to move text manually down to the next line is at the end of that, we would put another tag called a BR, which stands for break. Okay, so the break, it's a line break in this case, we'll move it down. And if we added more than one, well, guess what? We get another space. So we could put as many as we want. That controls the amount of space on the browser, okay, between lines. So BRs are really useful. They are another example of a tag that does not need to close. They can stay open and they're going to, uh, they're going to work just fine. Okay, so let's say we want to change the way the font looks, all right? Let's say we don't like it on the left side. It looks very generic, looks very basic. Let's start by moving the text to the center of the page, all right? So to do that, we're going to go after the body tag and we're going to hit return. We're going to move down to the next line. And you guessed it, we are going to put a center tag, okay? Center, spelt like that. Um, and some of these tags, once you know what they mean or what they, the abbreviation is for them, it's really easy to remember. So center, it automatically creates a closed tag. We're going to take that closed tag and we're going to cut it out of there. And we're going to put it at the end, somewhere around here, after... The last line of text we're going to paste it in there and what you'll see is all the text moves to the center of the page all right exactly what we would expect and again the reason this works is because we've got an opening tag here and a closing tag here and everything in between is going to become centered all right that's how tags work all right next let's say we want a font other than boring uh, times new roman Okay, so we are going to go to the start of this text that we have here and we're going to put in a font tag. Okay, so we want to change the font that's being used. Once again, we're going to take this closing part of the font tag, we're going to cut it out of here and we're going to paste it at the end so that our text is surrounded by the font tag. Now, you'll notice that nothing changes. And that's because we haven't actually defined what this font is going to look like yet. And this is where things start to get a little bit trickier. When you have a font tag, what you can do is you can actually put your cursor um, just after the T, but to the left of the greater uh, than symbol, and you're going to hit space. You'll notice that you have all these attributes that come up okay and attributes are super useful these are things that you could add to the tag to give the browser more information so in this case watch this I'm going to put size equals and I'm going to put a quotation like that and I'm going to put a number in there like let's say four you notice that the text gets slightly bigger let's say I put six it gets even bigger and once again, I think I can go up to seven here, and then that's kind of where it maxes out. So that is the size attribute. And the thing about attributes is they always follow the same format. They have a word, whatever it is. They have an equal symbol, and then they have quotations for what the attribute number is set to. Let's try another one. Let's say we want to change the way the font looks. We'll put a space after the six, or whatever number you chose, and we're going to put face equals quotations and in this case we need to know the name of a font on the computer and it needs to be spelt exactly the same the, the correct way so in this case I'm gonna put Helvetica because I'm on a Mac and you'll notice that the font changes to Helvetica alright I got it right I spelt it correctly now let's say you're on a PC and you build this uh, website on a Mac well good practice is to always have options for every platform regardless of where people look at it even mobile so what you would do is you would put a comma 
and you would give another font like Arial, which is a PC version of Helvetica. Uh, you could press comma again. You could put Comic Sans. Please do not use Comic Sans. Uh, and basically what it would do as it loads this page is it would check each font to see if it's on the computer. And if it's like if it can't find Helvetica, it will go to Arial. And if it can't find that, it'll go to the next one. So it's a way of kind of ensuring that if the fonts aren't installed on the device that people are looking at it on, they have other options like a backup plan. All right, next, let's say we want to format our text a little bit more. Let's say we want to have some bold text. So let's say the word example should be bold. I'm going to go in front of the word example. I'm going to put a B tag and B is short for bold. So I'm going to take the closing tag and I'm going to decide what I want to have bold. In this case, it's just going to be the word example. I'm going to paste it in there. Now you see the word example becomes bold. Let's say I wanted a word to become italicized. Let's use the word longer. I'm going to put a tag I for italics and take the closing tag, cut it out and paste it after the word longer. You can see that now longer is at a slant. Let's say I wanted some text underlined. Let's say I want this whole line of text underlined. I'm going to use a U tag. Okay, that is an underlined tag and I'm going to cut the ending and I can put it wherever I want and everything in between will become underlined. Okay, so this is how you would do simple formatting in HTML. Again, this is how tags work. This is really, really the basic foundation of what you need to know to get a website started. Okay, in the next lesson we're going to go on, we're going to make this look a little bit better. Um, but before I close this video, I want to explain one thing that's very, very important. When you go to save your site, you're going to go to File, Save As. And what you're going to do is you're going to create a folder. You always create a folder. And so when I click this down arrow, uh, let's say I go to my desktop, I'm going to make a new folder. I'm going to call this website and I'm going to create it. And the first page of every website, and this is very important to remember because this is what Google or any search engine is going to look for, is called index. So your first page should always be called index.html. That is the main page of your website and that is the first page that will come up when people search your website. So hit save and now we're finished with this. All right. And like I said, in the next one, we're going to move on to something a little bit more uh, I wouldn't say more difficult, but it's definitely going to make it look better. So stay tuned for that.